A montage of photographs depicting students and teachers. A graphic of the Perkins logo and the words, Teachable Moments. A title, What's for Lunch by Eric Carle, adapted by Megan Connaughton. Hi, I'm Megan Connaughton. I'm a teacher at Perkins School for the Blind in the Deaf Blind program. And today I'm going to be talking about my adapted version of Eric Carle's book, What's for Lunch. Megan is seated at a table with her adapted version of the book on a slant board to her left. We also see a touch activated switch with a large red button on the table. The book is about a monkey who is asking the repetitive question, what's for lunch? We see a color copy of an illustration of a monkey scratching his head and holding a banana. Each page of the book represents a different fruit choice that he has for his lunch. This book is a great opportunity for a repetitive line use of a switch. A large red circular switch sits on the table in front of the adapted book. With a pre-recorded switch, the student can be prompted at the beginning of each page to hit the switch and have the monkey ask, What's for lunch? After that, we identify what's on the page. For instance, the first page is about a coconut. So the monkey asks, what's for lunch? The response is a coconut. No thank you, monkeys don't like coconuts. So the student will be guided to reach out and identify the tactile representation of the coconut on the page. The tactile graphic of the coconut is a copper scouring pad. A coconut palm frond is cut from green felt. Each page uses a, a bold visual representation as well as a tactile cue to encourage the student who has cortical visual impairment to maintain visual attention as well as develop their visually guided reach. As we move through the book, the student is prompted to hit the switch and activate the line of the story. The book is open to a page showing an apple shape cut from shiny red mylar and a green felt leaf. As the student moves on through their lesson, they begin to learn that as I turn the page in the book, it's time to activate the switch and start the new page. They're then prompted to continue maintaining their visual attention with each, with each item of the page. On this page, we're looking at a red apple, which is a simple representation using a black background and red mylar paper, as well as a small tactile cue in the form of a felt leaf. As we move through each page, you can see the different representations. After displaying a sparkly green pear, Megan describes the construction of the other tactile graphics. For this book in particular, I chose to first laminate plain black paper, I then created visual representations of each fruit described in the story and glued them on top of the paper. This allows for a more vivid image as well as full access to the tactile representation on each page. To create this book, I went to the dollar store and found different representations for tactile cues that you might not think to use. For instance, for the grapes, I used a purple loofah. For the orange, I used a simple combination of pipe cleaners and hot glue. And for the lemon, I used a yellow shiny gift bag. I continued this pattern throughout the book, adding a simple visual and tactile representation on each page until we get to the final page where the monkey asks, what's for lunch, and finally receives his banana. To complete the book, I bound it together using loose binder rings to complete a full book for the student. And that's today's Teachable Moment.